Hi, everyone. Welcome to my first 2023 Essential Vegan Desserts Live event for Ruby. I'm Fran Costigan, the Director of Vegan Pastry at the Ruby Online Culinary School, and I'm just delighted to be here. I want to welcome all of our guests, all my guests, that and anyone who has gone through any of the Ruby programs, graduates, my students, welcome. I hope you had a really wonderful new year and we're off to a good start. This is a really interesting topic today. I got lots of questions about replacing dairy and I've got a whole bunch of props. So it's going to be a fair amount of show and tell. But before I get into the main event, which is the non-dairy replacements, I want to just go over a little bit of housekeeping as usual. If you have a question that hasn't been submitted or something comes to you now, there is a question on the right side of your screen. You can just type in your question. I'm going to get to as many questions as I possibly can, usually all of them. And um, if I ask you a follow-up question, you can ask again. Remember that you can always re review, <laughs> view again, or listen to these live events because they become available after the actual program. So without further ado here, I'm gonna have to adjust my glasses. You might be getting used to that if you know me. When it comes to making plant-based substitutions, we think about dairy, milk, cow's milk, or goat milk, creams, cream cheese, sour cream, anything that's dairy, including butter. And when I started, when I left the traditional pastry kitchen for the plant-based kitchen that I was hoping to create, close to 30 years ago, there wasn't much choice. There was soy milk. In terms of plant milk, I just remember soy milk and rice milk. I don't remember any other milks. There was not a single vegan butter that was in the marketplace, not one. We were using at the restaurant hydrogenated stick margarine. And you know we've come to know that, that is, it's very unhealthful to use hydrogenated oils and fats really, but also tasted terrible and had an odor that was really unpleasant. Today, there's just a plethora of ingredients to choose from and brands to choose from. So it's a matter of reading labels, knowing what works for you. And so I'm gonna go over a couple of things and also show you things. When you're replacing dairy, whichever dairy it is that you're going, you know, you want to replace the animal dairy, you want to consider the original product's appearance, texture, mouthfeel, taste, flavor profile, um, and the end use for your replacement. Once you've identified those characteristics, then consider plant-based ingredients and methods that will work, that you think will work instead of the dairy components. Now, in essential vegan desserts, in Plant Pro, in all of the Ruby plant, Ruby plant side, we have units on replacing these ingredients. But this is a good place for anyone to start. Think about the what it is, what it looks like, what the taste is like to you, and then what ingredients might work. So let's use sour cream as an example. Sour cream. I used to love sour cream when I was a kid. My mother bought, I didn't grow up with the most healthful foods except in the summertime. My mom made beautiful salads, but she used to buy these frozen strawberries in heavy syrup and 
mix, defrost the strawberries and mix it in with sour cream. And it made something that I really loved. I've been able to recreate that with a vegan sour cream facsimile that I make and defrosting, freezing and defrosting strawberries or making a strawberry in syrup, sometimes the roasted strawberries in the course and so on. I also like to use sour cream in borscht. So sour cream, most people know it's white. It has a creamy appearance. The texture and the mouthfeel are pretty rich and smooth. There is some slight acidic taste to it. It's pretty high fat, creamy. And so when I think about sour cream, I think, well, I can blend up some soaked cashews or even almonds or tofu and add ingredients to that that will add some acid. Like I actually like using apple cider vinegar. It's a bit acidic. It's acidic. It's definitely acidic. There's also a slight sweetness to it, which is very nice. And you get that sharp and slightly sweet flavoring. Sometimes I add a little bit of lemon juice as well, pinch of salt, other flavorings. Now, I didn't know this, you know, for until I knew it, that that's the way a lot of this is. We don't know until we know, but you can also use a bit of lactic acid to kind of sour things if you want to. So I have some lactic acid acid here and would just add a pinch and it's a flavoring a, like a sour flavoring made from sugar beet so this this is you know this is a brand that i have druids grow you can add that but i wouldn't add that until you adjust now when i'm adjusting what i'm making i don't do it in the whole batch i take a little bit out i do this when i'm making a soup when i'm making a V, you know, a dessert. You take a little bit out if you're not really happy, completely happy with the flavor and then mix in what you think will help, get it right. And then you go for the whole batch. Now, you know, is there one perfect food? And I'm thinking about plant milk here. I don't think so. I think it all depends on who we are. The best advice that I can really give you is to eat a wide variety of foods, rotate your foods, eat foods as close to their whole form as possible and find what works for you. And remember that it might change and be an educated consumer. You really have to read labels. Non-animal animal, non -animal milks, aka plant milks this is nothing that's really new they've been used for millennia you know people have been drinking making soy milk almond milk rice milk any nut legume seed flake these milks have been made for hundreds and thousands of years all of these milks can be made with the exception of soy milk can be made in a nut what's called a nut milk maker i think i don't have one i'm going to tell you how i make my milks i don't think that's necessary but unless you get one that heats and i don't have one you know i have a lot of things in my kitchen but that to me is a one use uh a piece of equipment that i don't need i find it very easy to make soy milk I mean, to make other milks, soy has to be heated during the process. Now you have to adjust the relative consistency of any plant milk. You don't have to, but you want to think about what you're using it for. You might want a thinner one. You might want a thicker one. You could make cashew milk, for example, and then use a lot less liquid, a lot less water and make a cashew cream. Now, many of the boxed or commercially available plant milks on the market have thickeners in them. They have gums, they have some fat added. There are, you know, there are a couple of brands that are just whatever the food item is and water. 
and they tend just to use more. You know, there's something that I can pick up in my local market called from three trees. And um, it's just almonds and water or pistachios and water. You, you have to see how you like it. Now, if there's anybody here who's wondering why we're not using cow's milk, I am not the food police. No one at Ruby is the food police. I'm not going to tell you what to do or that you're right or that you're wrong. But there are a lot of reasons to eliminate cow's milk and products made from cow's milk that go beyond animal welfare. Lactose intolerant, most adults are lactose intolerant. There are those who have dairy allergies. Dairy milk contains hormones, antibiotics. It's high in cholesterol, has a lot of cholesterol and saturated fat. So for myself, the reason that I really came over to the vegan world was because it turned out that I was lactose intolerant. I didn't know it. I was tired of having stomach aches. I left my work as a pastry chef. And then I started working with soy milk and rice milk because that's really all there was. I know that the dairy industry says, you know, we need milk for calcium and strong bones and so on. And I believe that has really been debunked. So do some of your own research and see about that. See about that. I haven't had any dairy products in over 30 years. And thank goodness I seem to be okay. I'm getting my calcium. I'm getting other things that are in dairy products from plant foods. So I'm going to ask Patrick to show a video now. It's a very short video on making hemp milk. And I chose hemp milk because it doesn't have to be soaked. You can just think of this for any seed. To make a sweetened non-dairy milk, such as hemp milk, add the nuts or seeds to a high-speed blender, along with three times the amount of water. Add a touch of natural extract, such as vanilla, and a tablespoon or so of date paste. Alternatively, you can use whole fresh pitted dates. Blend on low and then increase the speed to high and blend until smooth. Due to their soft texture, nuts and seeds such as hemp seeds do not need to be strained. This sweetened non-dairy milk will keep for a few days in the refrigerator. All right, so that's, you know, hemp seeds do not have to be soaked. Black seeds, for example, don't have to be soaked. Chia. You, you can make milk from anything. Um, the, uh, whether or not you decide to strain it, that's your choice. But I want to show you, I when I make plant milk, I make it using my Vitamix blender, my high-speed blender, and if I'm using almonds, I soak them. And I do have a nut milk bag, but I have discovered of late that I really prefer pouring the milk through this very fine mesh sieve. And then I take a spatula. No, I take actually a whisk and I whisk it through. And I feel like it's cleaner, it's faster. There's nothing to wash afterwards except for the whisk and it works well. I want to show you what I have here. Let me just uncover these. So I made some oat milk the other day that I'm going to show you and I made it from cooked, already cooked oats. And this is what was left in the strainer. Now, I just put that right back into my oatmeal. I eat steel cut oats almost every single day. And so it just went into my oats. If And this is actually some almond pulp. I don't often make almond milk, but I made some and 
that was the Amun pulp that was left. Now, you may have heard me, certainly people who've been to my live events before, people in the Essential Vegan Desserts course have heard me say that my go-to plant milk for baking, for making desserts, and for making savory food is oat milk. And the reason that I prefer, well, there are a few reasons that I prefer oat milk and the brand that I like the best is Oatly. It works well in all applications. It froths, it tastes good, but a really important reason is that I consider it the most allergen-free milk of the plant milks. I always assume that there will be soy avoiders I am not a soy avoiders, but someone that I'm serving will be, say, no soy for me. There will be people who are allergic to nuts. That's going to leave out my almond milk, cashew milk, and so on and so on, any of those milks. Um, oat milk is really good for all of those reasons. Um, now... I've learned a couple of things about oat milk in the in the last few days that I want to share with you, some by accident and some by by just learning about it. But you know, if you if you think about if there's anyone here who has made oatmeal, and I kind of assume that most of you have made oatmeal at some point, when you're cooking the oats, they get milky, right? You get that milky. And that's a real plus. I use a small amount of rolled oats actually to cream my soups instead of cashew because of that milk. But when you're making oat milk there, it can be very often people talk about oat milk being slimy. I don't know what other word to say. You don't, you don't want it heated. People who make rolled, use rolled oats and water and blend it pretty quickly so that it doesn't have a chance to get that milky, slimy thing going and then strain it. So I was reasoning the other day that I could just, what if I thought, what if I take some of my already cooked rolled oats, put it in a blender with, you know, I played around with the amount of water. It didn't taste great. It tasted like watery oatmeal. And then I added some date paste and I added a pinch of salt. It was really nice. It was really nice. So you know, I was, I was happy with that. And I will, I haven't used it yet for desserts, but I'm going to. Yesterday I did a lecture at the Walnut Hill Culinary College and they had a different brand of oat milk for me, one that I haven't used before. It was called Planet Oat. And when we poured it out and it didn't say low fat, you know, Oatly comes original barista. All of the barista milks just mean that there's more fat added. And, oh, you know, there are no fat milk, which looks like what I remember skim milk to look like this planet oat kind of looked like a 1%, a 1% milk. Now, there is talk of people say, well, oat milk has so much added sugar. It actually doesn't have sugar added. Oats, uh, when oat milk is being produced, the starch is broken down and then it converts into simple sugars. And there is something called amylase, which breaks down the starch into sugars in the making of commercial oat milk. So that doesn't mean there's no sugar, but it does mean that there is no added sugar. Now, honestly, if it wasn't for allergies, soy milk would be my go-to. It has the highest amount of protein of all of the plant milks, maybe with the exception of pea milk, pea protein. <laughs> pea milk is called, some people call it protein plant milk. It's got a great high protein content. It's got a nice amount of fat and I really like to use it. Um, they're just, it's, it's amazing. It's un uncountable only. There's almond milk. You know, people have conflicting ideas about almonds. Do they take too much water in the growing of the almonds? Well, I don't think almonds are going away. Some people talk about the necessity of soaking almonds before you ingest them as a way to get rid of 
phytic acid. I do soak almonds before I make almond milk, or I soak them to pinch off the skins to prepare blanched almonds. But when I'm eating almonds as a snack or using them in a crumble or a crisp or as a dessert, I roast my almonds unsoaked, low and slow. I think that's really great. This is up to you. I've heard, I've had some people say to me, well, what about cyanide in the skin of almonds? No, bitter, that's in bitter almonds and bitter almonds are not sold in the United States. So I wouldn't work about that. So before I go on, I'm gonna ask Patrick to run a really quick video showing how we soak almonds. To soak nuts, place the nuts into an appropriate sized bowl and fill with at least two times the amount of water. Let soak for a few hours or overnight to allow them to completely soften. When ready, the nuts should be plump and almost double in size. Once soaked, the nuts can be peeled easily if desired. Soaking nuts makes them softer, which makes it easier to achieve a smooth texture when processing or blending them. Okay, so I'm going to do a little show and tell now before I go further with chat, chat, chat. You know, I, <laughs> I like to talk. I have a lot of information that I want to share. And then I'm going to start um, answering some questions. Here is Oatly Barista blend, which is different from the Oatly original. It just has more fat. Why? Because the coffee shops want to be able to froth it. That's all. So you could use original and add a little more fat in the form of a liquid oil, a neutral tasting oil, if that's what you want to do. Or use the low fat, non fat, I think it's called, or make your own. I find this interesting so here's my soy milk i prefer west soy this is unsweetened plain and the ingredients are water and organic soybeans and then under that it says contain soy which i think is kind of funny it says nine grams per serving and then you've got to figure out okay one cup serving the Eden Soy is the one that I started with. Eden is a company that has been making plant foods, macrobiotic foods for as long as I can remember, or I first saw them when I changed my diet. And this, this West Soy is 100 calories per fluid cup. And the Eden Soy is 12 grams of protein to the nine grams of protein. 120 calories for the same 240 milliliters, eight ounce. Is that right? Let me just check one cup. And I don't prefer the taste of this one, but this is me. This is me. Now, you know, in the same way that I never drank a glass of milk because I couldn't stomach it, maybe chocolate milk. I don't know, but then I got a stomach ache. Um, I don't drink glasses of plant milk. I don't have children. I don't have to worry about that, but I use it in other ways. What else have I got here? Oh, so I have a friend in Philadelphia. Her name is Andrea Corby Fine. You might see her on Instagram. You should look. She does great stuff. She's a graduate of Ruby, and she, when she travels, she takes soy milk powder with her so that she can ha make sure to have fresh plant milk. So I bought some. It's pure. This one is pure organic dehydrated soy milk. I keep it in my refrigerator and then I can make soy milk thin or thick as I want. Let me get rid of some of these things. And then I have all of these. I haven't tried everything. This is new to me. This is evaporated oat milk from Nature's Charm. I haven't tried it, but it's evaporated milk. I don't know. I think I could make 
thick oat milk and it would work the same. This is sweetened condensed coconut milk. Well, let's, there's probably some sugar in here. Contains coconut is what it says. Contains coconut, but, and sugar and cane sugar. And this is sweetened condensed coconut milk. Same thing. Then we have our coconut milks, which are high in fat. This one is actually coconut cream. Just means that there's more coconut and less water in here. Don't spend your money on low fat coconut milk. Buy regular canned coconut milk, mix it with water. Don't pay for water. That's what I have to say about that. And now I just want to see sweetened. Oh, so here's sweetened condensed oat milk. I've got a lot of things to try soon. I, and this is organic coconut milk classic. This doesn't have this. This is classic. It has guar gum in it. So there are my milks. I'm going to take, oh, hi, Shar is here. I'm going to take Shar's question. Hi, Shar. It's good to see you, Charlene Nolan. If you're a Ruby student, Shar may have graded some of your assignments, and Shar knows everything about whole food plant-based, no oil, and I'm really happy to have her as a friend and colleague. So Shar's question is, do you see a need for nut milk machines or do you think that a high speed blender can handle the work as long as you have a good nut milk bag? Well, I'd like to know what other people think. I don't see the need for a nut milk machine. I find that I can make nut seed, you know, plant milk super fast using my high speed blender. And then I've stopped, as I told you, I've stopped using a nut milk bag. Char, why don't you try getting yourself, you probably have one, very fine mesh strainer, pour it through, whisk it through, and it, and then you have, you know, this left over, it's easier than milking the bag. So that's my feeling about it. I know some people who are happy with their nut milk bags, I mean, <laughs> nut milk machines, but I'm personally not going to get one. Paula wants to know if I can recommend a recipe to make a very creamy nut milk that can be used in a latte. Well, Paula, I kind of froth milk every morning, so I don't know if I'm making a latte or a cappuccino, but I have an espresso frother, and I find that of all of the milks, when I use soy milk, commercial, you know, box soy milk in the frother, it's almost like whipped cream. If you have a, a situation where you can froth, you can tell the amount of fat that's in these various milks just by frothing them. So that froths really well. I find that regular oat milk, generally, unless it's one of the low fat ones, froths pretty well. Almond milk, so-so. Rice milk, not at all. In order to get a milk that's creamy, a creamy nut milk, there's going to be added fat to it. So, you know, you see the creamers in the marketplace. I'm sure you've seen the, you know, creamers in the marketplace. Read the label. It's the same thing. It's a nut or the seed or whatever and water and a fat. And that's what makes it froth. So I like my soy lattes and my oat milk lattes. And I'm not using the oat leaf or any of the baristas. I'm using just a an original. So Marion, hi Marion. Marion says her husband loves dairy-based yogurt. She's had a hard time finding a plant-based yogurt that has a thick taste texture and a good flavor. Well, Marion, I have had a number of plant-based yogurts that have been quite thick and some have, you know, more tang than others. I buy unsweetened because I like a very tangy yogurt. So I think you're just going to have to try some different brands. The coconut milk yogurts are very, very thick. I don't prefer them. Um, I like Kite Hill yogurt and I like their protein yogurt. 
I have tried to make yogurt a couple of times using my Instant Pot. There's a way to do it with a plant milk and probiotic, a nice thick plant milk and probiotic, but I have gotten more of what I'd call like a kefir, stoopier than yogurt. But <laughs> I just got some of this. I've been going through my pantry. I think my kitchen renovation that I've been talking about for three years might happen. So here's a yogurt culture starter and I might try it. So Marion, just, you know, try, it's not very economical to buy the small ones really, but try a few different brands and see what you find. And for, you know, for my taste, the Kite Hill Protein Unsweetened, it's thick and it's really nice and tangy. So I want to show you before I take any more questions, I want, I have a load of butters that I want to show you. Let me move these guys over. So vegan butter, some, this is flora butter, <laughs> the very last bit of it. Flora has been discontinued. I know my people who do laminated dough are going to be unhappy about that because this worked to make beautiful croissant pommier laminated dough. It is made with, there is palm oil as an ingredient. You know, you need a butter that's has a high fat content and is firm and it isn't going to melt at room temperature. They say that their palm oil is sustainable. I try not to use palm. I do the best that I can. But anyway, this isn't an option anymore. So I'm going to put that over here. However, the company has rebranded their flora to Violife butter. And if you are familiar with Violife, you know they make wonderful cream. Uh, they make nice cheeses. There's now a Violife heavy cream substitute that, <clears throat> excuse me, it works quite well. So it's very interesting. A lot of the new butters are you have as an ingredient faba, which is aquafaba. It's chickpea. I don't mind that. I don't have an allergy. My friend Dory Passan, also a graduate of Ruby, who is an expert bread baker. Her daughter is allergic to chickpeas, so she can't use it. So let's see. This Violife butter does have palm and palm kernel oil, sunflower oil, pea protein, and on and on and on and on. Now, I found out by accident, and some of you may know this, that Country Croc is a supermarket brand for what was, <laughs> I'm getting mixed up here. What was, well, my gosh, I can't even think about it. So Country Croc is, let's see what's in it, because it's new. Blend of, you think I need new glasses? I think so. Blend of palm oil, fruit, canola, palm kernel oil, pea protein, sunflower, lecithin, and then some vitamins and things. This works really well in your laminated doughs. For people who are, well, you can't use this if you're allergic to nuts, but this is Miyoko's made with cashews. It's a very good tasting butter. This is unsalted. I prefer unsalted for baking, um, but it, does, it doesn't It does have as much fat. It doesn't have palm oil. Not recommended for laminated doughs, for example. Your buttercream might get a little watery. I did a live event. You know, you can go to the library and look at the live events, but I did one where I had all many different butters, not as many as these, out on my counter for a period of time and watched how they melted. I have Miyoko came up with an oat milk butter for people who are allergic to cashews, but this is a spread, softer, more liquid. So it's not for baking. And this is Earth Balance, which I think was one of the first. I don't personally care for it. That's just me. This is from Trader Joe. Trader Joe, and it's a blend of coconut oil, sunflower oil, shea butter, which isn't a dairy butter, and 
It says contains coconut and shea butter. Um, it's very yellow. This just came in the nick of time. This is a butter from a baker called a bakery called Ohm Sweet Ohm, and it's a non-dairy butter alternative, soy, palm oil, and nut free. I know Dawn, who formulated this butter. She was one of my students 10 years ago, and she does sell this. If there's anybody here who's a you know has a business and wants to buy a nice butter in bulk. The link is in the chat to Dawn and you can ask her questions about it. She said to me, I haven't used it in 10 years. <laughs> I got this today. Um, she said she thinks it's about 81% fat, which is high. That's about the same as Flora. That's the name that went out of my head. And she said she has clients who do use this to make laminated doughs. So there's the link. You can look for it, but she does sell only in bulk. She does mail order, but it's bulk. It might work for you. Give it a try. And I think that's all my butters. So I'm going to move them out of the way here and see. I want to show you. This is my favorite cream. So this is the vanilla pastry cream that's in the Essential Vegan Desserts course. I took it to the college yesterday and people went crazy. Now this is this consistency. This is a pouring cream. In the course, we thicken this so that it's really like a cake filling or can even be a tart filling. And the original recipe called for both guar gum and agar powder. Guar gum is a thickener doesn't need heat. Agar is a gelling agent and it needs heat to activate. But because so many people are avoiding gums today, I want to thank Laura Hollenbeck for advising me about that. I'm seeing it more now. I just use, I take the guar gum out and I use more agar powder and it works. And it is an absolutely delicious vanilla pastry cream. I have made it into like a creme fraiche by adding some lemon juice and letting it sit on my counter for a good period of time. This is the same cream, but you can see, I think that it's quite a different color. It's more like a caramel color. My daughter-in-law loves this cream so much that she wanted, she said, we should go into business and market this cream. But last year she decided that she didn't want to eat anything with any cane sugar. And so I use dates, so softened pitted medjool dates to sweeten the cream. I wouldn't call it a vanilla pastry cream anymore. You know, to me, it's like what people would call caramel. I don't think it's caramel, but it's delicious. And you can freeze these creams and have a really nice ice cream. So they're very, very versatile. Let's see. I have a question from Christopher. Is there a good substitute for butter in sauteing and baking that is not, that does not, the question isn't that, here we go, that does not involve high saturated fats like coconut and palm oil? He doesn't mind some fat, just not lots of saturated fat. Well, I try also to avoid saturated fat. And there are ways you can avoid it. You know, butter, dairy butter has a lot of saturated fat. Avocados have some saturated fat. It's considered to be healthier. Coconut products have saturated fat. There are people who say that that form of fat is healthful. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then there are people who don't use any fat. So Christopher, I would say if you're using fat, you're not, you're not um, saying that you're going to do no fat at all, but you want to avoid saturated fat. Use a nice oil, a nice liquid oil. You know, I'm talking about all these butters, but the fact is, again, there was no butter. When I started developing recipes, I tend to use oil. I like sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, and extra virgin olive oil. So why don't you try that? Try using those oils. Marie. 
Juan Marie has an interesting question. How do I make homemade vegan mayo that actually tastes good? Well, <laughs> there are a few. I am not somebody that ever ate a lot of mayonnaise, but there was a mayo on the market called Just, Just Mayo. They make Just Egg. And I wanted to recreate my mother-in-law, Winnie, depression mayonnaise cake. You know, during the depression, people were making a chocolate cake using mayonnaise in place of eggs, because what is mayonnaise? If you don't know, mayonnaise is an emulsion of oil, <laughs> fat, and egg yolk. And it's prepared in a particular way. So I was looking for a nice tasting mayo and I bought this just, and the cake worked. I think the recipe might be on my website, francostigan.com. So mayonnaise, vegan mayonnaise can be made. Typically, it's made with an unsweetened soy milk or later, as we came to know, aquafaba, which is chickpea liquid with aquafaba and oil is added. You can't get away from not using a fair amount of oil to make mayonnaise. And I have done it with aquafaba using my immersion blender and it worked. In terms of making it taste good, you want some salt, you want some, I like adding some dry mustard, lemon, and it works. Now there's a link in the chat to Miyoko Shinner's book, Homemade P Vegan Pantry. She has great recipes. Many of you know Miyoko. She is a terrific, really interesting woman. And so her, she has a classic eggless meringue. She's using soy milk. She says soy milk or other non-dairy milk, a little bit of mustard. This is the first time I'm looking at it, but you know, I went to mustard, apple cider vinegar for the tang and sea salt or black salt. So the, col the salt that gives our tofu scramble there, the um, eggy flavor, a teaspoon of organic sugar optional, and then for one cup of the plant milk, one and a half to two and a half cups of canola or other neutral oil. So why don't you try that? If you are already starting, Marie, with a homemade vegan mayo, recipe that you like, just add a little more flavoring, add some vinegar, add some citrus, add some, and just work with it. And um, there's the link and good luck to you. Um, Joan has, can I talk about how to use the leftover pulp from making nut milk? Yes. You know, I don't like waste. Most of us are really getting on this no wasted food. Food is precious. Food is expensive. Let's not waste it. So in terms of what I showed you earlier, my oat pulp went back into my oatmeal. My almond pulp, if I have a lot, and personally I don't because I don't make a lot of nut milks, I dehydrate the pulp by spreading it out in a thin layer on a parchment lined sheet pan and dehydrate till it's crunchy. And that works really well. And I'm able to then just use it in place of a nut topping or, you know, you want to flavor it up because it's not going to have a whole lot of flavor. Flavor it up with some cinnamon and mix it into your porridge into your rice pudding or top a cobbler with it, stuff a baked apple. That's what I would do. Nancy has a question that, um, you know, I have heard other parents say this. She wants, she's asking about the use of plant-based milks with toddlers and young adolescents. What's the unbiased science saying about this? Nancy, I would say do some research and go to very, you know, go to researchers that are real scientists. I can't really um, talk to that. I'm not an expert on that at all. I think the important thing is what can your child tolerate? 
Do they have any allergies and don't rely on these milks for everything? You know, again, rotate your foods. Kathy wants to know which plant-based milks are the healthiest substitute for cow's milk. Well, I think all of them are healthier than cow's milk. Again, soy milk has the most protein. And so I think it, to my mind, it is the healthiest one. Look, I look for plant milks that have the least amount of added stuff. So if you've got a plant milk, that's just whatever your nut or seed or bean or flake is and water, you're good to go. Let's see. Hi, Lynn says, how much butter is okay and healthy? Well, Lynn, <laughs> that's entirely up to you. I mean, um, you know, butter is a very nutrient dense food, meaning it's very caloric and there's a lot of saturated fat in butter. And I think, you know, the dietetic associations say that we shouldn't have more than 10% saturated fat per day in our diet. I know Dr. Esselstyn, the forks over knives people would say none. I get my fat from nuts and seeds and occasional avocado. I mean, everything has fat in it, so I wouldn't worry about it. So you have to decide what works for you. I can't tell you how much butter is healthy, but all of these butters that I just showed you, try some of these butters and see what they are. They are not without fat. They are not without fat. But if you're looking for the taste of butter, then you have an alternative. They are better than dairy butter, in my opinion. Wanda wants to know which homemade plant milk has the highest fat content. Well, the you know home, you're talking about homemade nuts are going to have, you know, nuts are pretty nutrient dense. I don't know how many nuts. What your proportion of nuts to water is uh coconut milk can coconut milk would be the highest fat content so it wanda if you're making soy milk that's going to have a higher fat content denise has a question denise says she tends to stick with store-bought milks for my kids due to the fact that they're fortified with vitamins and minerals i think that's really an important thing to note and she was shocked to see how much sugar is in the plant-based milk. Well, yes, there, you know, but in the case of the oat milk, as I said, that is sugar that comes from the oats, the, oat, the starch in oats being broken down. It's not added in. So that's something that you just have to decide, you know, look for unsweetened plant milks. There are plenty of them. And I don't only use homemade plant milk. I very, I mean, I keep these containers around for myself. Uh, Yvonne wants to know, how do I make pea milk? I like the taste of ripple pea milk. Uh, it's made with yellow lentils. I haven't made pea milk myself, but if you take yellow lentils, I'm not sure if I, I think I would probably soak them and add water and in a high speed blender just blend it up and strain it as you would any milk. Uh, there is a lot of protein in pea milk. And, you know, I have, I thought when I first saw Ripple in the markets, I thought it was great. I really liked it. I liked the flavor. It's creamy. It's pretty neutral. It depends. I gave it to some other people. Some kids liked it, some didn't. But why don't you try that? It's yellow lentils. Ong wants to know, I have used a bean to replace milk. Is that okay? So I'm not 100% clear on your question, but I, you know, as I've said, any soy milk would be a bean. Uh, the pea milk is made from lentils. That's also a legume. If you want to ask me in the chat, I think it's still open. Let me know what kind of bean you're talking about. Maybe I can answer that question for you. I mean, I haven't made black bean milk 
or chickpea milk, but I do use aquafaba. Hi, Laura. So Laura says she's wondering what my thoughts on, on this new sesame milk. Well, I haven't tasted it yet, Laura, but sesame is a very healthy seed. There's a lot of calcium in sesame. So I think it would be great. I think it would be absolutely great. I mean, I love tahini. <laughs> I just absolutely love it. So why not? Um, the only thing is for everyone to understand that sesames are an, considered high on the allergen list. So make sure. But, you know, I just used the word, said tahini to Laura. And I want to let everyone know that a shortcut way to make nut milk, for example, is take some almond butter, take some, any of your nut butters, add water and you've made nut milk. And so you can start with an unsweetened nut butter, unsalted if you want, make your nut milk. Um, Janora says, my son's allergic to milk. I've tried almond milk and other forms and he had a bad reaction. Well, I don't know what all of them that you've tried. His bad reaction, was it from it upset his stomach or he didn't like the flavor? So that's something you have to work with. There are a lot. And I will say, I will stress that the various brands have different flavor profiles. So just keep trying. You might want to try little packs or make some yourself, sweeten the milk maybe with dates or a little bit of maple syrup and see if that helps. Lynn wants to know, can you mix different plant milks together if you're running out of one and need some more for baking? Absolutely. Definitely. I think when it comes to baked goods, unless a recipe says use this plant milk or any plant milk except this one, it should all be fine. The only thing that I find is different is rice milk. Rice milk is almost like using water. And that said rice, you know, but I have used rice milk and it works. So go ahead and mix. Again, if you're mixing things, I'm always thinking about allergies. Make sure that you're letting people know. <laughs> I have a friend who uh, loves cashews, can eat almonds, pistachios, peanuts, can't have hazelnuts. So Jody has a niece who has nut allergies. What are the best nut-free milks? Well, you've got your pea milk, P-E-A milk. You've got oat milk, which as I said in the very beginning, is my go-to plant milk because it is allergen-free. If your niece is okay with soy, soy milk would be fine for her. So why don't you try that? Um, Toki says, I haven't made plant milk yet. Does it freeze well? I freeze a lot of things. And I just took that. Uh, I took this cream, in fact, right out of the freezer. But I don't freeze my plant milks. If there's anybody here who has frozen them, go ahead. I don't find it very hard to make plant milk and I don't buy, you know, half gallons necessarily because I'm living alone unless I'm doing a giant amount of recipe testing or recipe development or making a lot of desserts. So I haven't frozen them. I don't know. Uh, and Toki wants to know, are all plant milks created equal? No, they're I mean, it depends. They almost all work for baking. I think they all work interchangeably for baking with the exception of rice milk. Michelle is asking also, can I make pea protein milk at home? As I said, um, I haven't done it, but now I'm really curious and I'm going to take some yellow lentils. I think I have some and I'm going to try making some and see. Any legume, any nut, any seed, any flake should, plus water in a blender and strain, should make what we're calling milk. You know, ancient people did this. Almond milk was almond milk and sesame milk and 
pistachio milk and all these milks are if you look at recipes in books from a while ago you're going a while ago years ago thousand years ago soy milk you're going to see these milks were a thing uh rachel wants to know i'd like to know a good vegan buddy that's healthy ish and not margarine okay all vegan butter technically speaking is margarine so some of you have heard me talk about Carolina Molia L'Artisan Bakery in Miami. If you haven't looked at the website, do. Your mind will be blown. Her desserts are amazing. And she and I were talking one day and she kept, and she makes croissant and all kinds of things. And she would kept saying margarine, margarine. And I said, Carolina, it's vegan butter. She was just being honest butter is dairy butter is butter these vegan butters are margarine but you know the healthy ish part has to do with what ingredients make sense to you some have coconut some have cashew some have palm oil decide what works for you in terms of taste you need to taste them they all taste a bit different and I haven't, I'm trying to, the only, you know, there's only one that I don't like the taste of, but I think you probably cannot go wrong with the country crock, Miyoko's. And I thought the Trader Joe's, if you have a Trader Joe's near you, I thought that it was pretty pleasant too. And I know this Ohm is very nice. So try them, you know, very occasionally I'll have a little bit of vegan butter on a piece of toast or make cinnamon toast. If I'm feeling kind of like, Oh, I miss, <laughs> I miss this from my past. But other than that, it has to taste good to you. You know, we all have different ideas about what tastes good. Suzanne has a question. When cooking, do you tend to use the same nut milk and flour? For example, oat milk, and oat flour. That's a really interesting question, Suzanne. Thank you. No, I don't. I don't necessarily. I tend to use oat milk, as I've said, but if I'm using, you know, I don't match the milk to the flour. I might think about doing that sometime. So Karen says she is confused about vegan butter and cream cheese. She's found they all have a lot of oil in them. If I'm eating a whole food plant-based you're not supposed to eat oil. Well, Karen, you just really answered your own question. Vegan butters, vegan cream cheese, they are not fat free. They have oil in them. So if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, which is a no oil diet, these are not products for you to eat, but you could make a nice cream cheese like substance food using cashews for example if cashews are in your dietary system so i'm showing you options because we're not using butter we can use vegan butter but it depends on what your dietary system is and as i say about essential vegan desserts you know we all have birthdays and i hope we're all going to keep having them for a really long time and that we have celebrations. We just, you know, the December holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's Eve, the weddings, you know, engagements. These are all reasons. To me, desserts are treats. They're absolutely necessary. I want people to be able to follow a plant-based diet happily and think of desserts as treats. And so in Essential Vegan Desserts, the idea is to learn how to do the foundation, learn the foundational technique so that you can make something right and reliable and absolutely unapologetically delicious. Then I tend to serve, well, I don't tend to, I serve smaller portions of something that's really delicious. And I don't eat nuts. I don't eat desserts every single day. I might have a cookie every day, but that's it. Lily wants to know if you're using the nut bag, is this something you can do with what's inside? I always feel bad to put it in the garbage. Well, a few questions ago, I talked about you could scrape out what's in there and dehydrate it 
if you don't have a dehydrator, just spread out. But that's the pulp. That's the pulp from the nuts that was strained out. Spread it in a thin layer and put it in a very low oven until it is crispy. So yes, we don't want to put anything in the garbage that we don't have to. Tom wants to know what's my experience regarding goat cheese as well. Tom, I don't eat any dairy. I don't eat any animal products. And so I, that would include goat cheese. Thank you for the question. Kate says that she's had a varying degree of success making non-dairy yogurt. Do I have any tips or recipes? And well, we talked about yogurt before. I haven't been able to make a thick yogurt using Jill Nussenau, actually the veggie queen in her book, Vegan Under Pressure, has a recipe for making yogurt in the Instant Pot. It's not thick the way I want it to be, but I am going to try using this. And I use, I put a probiotic into the milk and then it takes a really long time. I'm gonna try using this vegan yogurt culture starter. So then I will know. Uh, another question from Kate, non-dairy related question. They don't all have to be about dairy. Uh, for hot cocoa, I would love a recipe for vegan marshmallows. I don't have one that I can give you off the top of my head. Vegan marshmallows or marshmallows in general are not a quick thing to make, but it is doable. And I have had students in essential vegan desserts make vegan marshmallows but you can find really nice ones in the marketplace. Dandies is one brand of vegan marshmallows that's really delicious. And I'm with you, I like a marshmallow in my hot chocolate. Uh, what was the brand of soy milk powder that I displayed? It is Druid's Grove, that's D-R-U-I-D-S Grove. And it's a very good brand of, they have a lot of product. Um, you can find it on Amazon or just Google it. Um, another yogurt question. Boy, people like their yogurt. I like yogurt too. Look at, look online, look for Jill Nussenau's Instant Pot recipe for making yogurt. But basically what yogurt is, plant-based yogurt, depend, you know, there are some that are made with coconut milk and then you're going to get a very thick and creamy, and you, we want a nice tangy yogurt. Some are made with almonds, some are made with cashews. I make mine with soy milk, a nice thick unsweetened soy milk, probiotic capsules, and time, a lot of time. You either keep it on your counter, keep looking, or in the instant pot, Mary says, I love your glasses. Well, thank you, Mary. I keep going like this because I think they need to be adjusted. These glasses are really old and I don't want anything to happen to them. Thank you so much. Anne says, would most of the desserts listed in your dessert book be easy to substitute sugar with coconut sugar, syrup, or honey and still turn out? It's a recipe by recipe situation. I use coconut sugar a lot. In the course, we learn to grind our sugars because most natural sugars and coconut sugar is that are large crystal and I wanna get them finer. So I kind of rough it up or powder it in my food processor. So works great in chocolate cake, in many, many desserts. I wouldn't use coconut sugar necessarily in a vanilla cake because of the color. I think of coconut sugar, I started out thinking of coconut sugar as a brown sugar substitute because it's got that slight, um, to me, slight molasses taste, uh, but I use it, I would say it's almost my go-to sugar. So yes, you can. Um, I don't use honey. You can't substitute a granulated sweetener, whether it's cane or coconut, with a liquid sweetener without doing a lot of 
without doing changes. Uh, since you're here, you can access the library, the live events library. I did at least one live event on substituting sweeteners. So you might want to look at that. And um, we go into liquid sweeteners and granulated sweeteners in depth because in this course, because it is after all a desserts course. So, you know, I, li I like to say every change makes a difference. I don't like to say it. I will say it because it's the truth. I know that people get aggravated, but you know, when I see a recipe that says use one cup of, I don't know, whole wheat pastry flour or one cup of gluten-free flour, it drives me a little crazy because maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. There are changes. So Catherine says, I make nut milk with my Vitamix and I strain it through a nut milk bag. How many nutrients are lost by straining it? I don't think you have to worry about losing the nutrients. Um, use your pulp, use your pulp in something else and don't worry about it. The idea is to eat a really healthful diet and, and get vitamins, minerals, nutrients, fiber from a variety of foods and not worry about what you're losing. Some people don't strain their milks and that's okay too. So Rhonda says, I use gluten-free oats. Will they work as well as regular oats? Thank you for that. So oats do not inherently contain gluten and that confuses people. The gluten aspect or why we look for gluten-free oats if gluten is an issue for us is cross-contamination. So yes, your gluten-free oats will be fine. Jessica wants to know, did I mix 50-50 steel cut oats, roll oats to make my oat milk? No, I used about a quarter of a cup of my steel cut oats, which was pretty firm. I batch cook my oats and then add a little liquid and rewarm them every morning. And I started with for a quarter of a cup of the cooked oatmeal. I started with a half a cup of water. I kind of looked at it and thought about it. And I added a little bit of a little more to my liking. I'm going to stop here and show you some. This is, this was so cool. So this is all the milk. Well, four out of the five milks I made this week. And then I did something that I was curious about and it was thrilling to me. So this is an oat milk. You can see how it's separated. All I have to do is shake it up. This is this one, another one, it's separated less. There's no reason for it. I made it a little later, shake it. This is Oatly that I poured into a glass container because you know every one of the oat milk uh, every one of the milk containers that you buy say shake 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 because the solids settle so i was just curious uh, would that happen with oatly and it sure did it settled too so that's why you shake it this is almond milk that I made and didn't especially strain. And it was very separated earlier before the live started. So I shook it up. What else is over here? Anything else? No. This is some left coconut milk. This is a half a cup of coconut milk that I had left over from making the cream. And it got very firm in my refrigerator. So that was really fun. I have a lot of milks now. Um, what's the best? This is a great question, Mabel. Thank you. What's the best milk to use to create buttermilk? I noticed oat milk tends not to curdle as almond milk. Well, that's interesting to me because to me that's backwards. The milk that's going to curdle, for anyone who isn't familiar with what we're talking about, adding an acid to milk, dairy milk or a plant milk, the milk's going to curdle. 
if you leave it alone for a little while. It's not going to taste like buttermilk, but it will work like buttermilk. I find that almond milk doesn't curdle very well. I find that a more full fat oat milk does. The best milk to curd that curdles the best is soy milk, has this soy milk. But I like doing that and I do it often. Um, is the Violife butter hydrogenated? None of these vegan butters slash margarine are hydrogenated, none. That's from the olden days. These are all, these all contain fat that sticks together through whatever process the butter maker is using, but they are definitely, there are no trans fats and there are no, there's no hydrogenation. We have a recipe in the course for making vegan butter. I'm not sure if it made it into the document, but um, I can add it or you can write to me, fran at ruby.com, and I will send it to you. It's from Miyoko's um, book, which is over here, Homemade Vegan Pantry. There are a lot of different butter recipes. Some people use cacao butter, which is not dairy butter at all. It's the fat and chocolate that is taken out all, you know, to some percent, depending on the percentage of chocolate. And there's all different ways to make vegan butter. It's really easy. Jackie wants to know, is it better to make your own milk compared to buying it at the market? It depends. It's less expensive. And we know that food costs are going crazy. It doesn't take very much time and you can create a milk as thick or thin as you want and you can add a sweetener or not. So I think it's really cool to make your own. I mean, it, it really takes no time at all. So no, I mean, I, it looks like I skipped a question here, but I'm just going to repeat there are no hydrogenated. I mean, they're probably, I don't know. Maybe there are still hydrogenated margarines in the marketplace, but I'm not buying them. I buy nice vegan butters and they are not hydrogenated, not whatsoever. Kate wants to know, should you cook your oats before making oat milk? No. I mean, uh, my new favorite way that I'm going to stick is by taking some of my oatmeal that is already cooked and making oat milk that way and straining it. But if you're making oat milk from scratch, you know, you don't have oatmeal made and I eat oatmeal every morning. So that's just no problem at all for me. I always have oatmeal around. I love it. Sometimes I even have it for dinner if I've had a really long day. But you don't want to cook your oats. You take rolled oats, water, blend it for as short a time as possible. You don't want the oats to heat. Then you have this potential problem of them getting slimy. So you start with cold water, start with room temperature oats, blend and strain and Rachel wants to know, how do you make plant milks last longer? Um, well, my plant milks in my refrigerator, the homemade ones, I tend to think I make smaller quantities depending on how long, you know, how much I'm going to be using them, but they last a good four or five days. And I find the commercial ones last a week at least. Rachel, you might want to check the temperature of your refrigerator. It might not be cold enough. That's a possibility. I keep my refrigerator pretty cold. So those are all the questions. Um, I want to thank you all for coming and asking me such intelligent questions and spending this time with me. Hope you learned something about dairy substitutes. I'm going to say goodbye and I hope to see you in February for my Valentine's Day Essential Vegan Desserts Live event. Bye.